A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Today's speaker believes women hold the key to the economic well-being of families and communities across the globe. Lena Ravindran Green is a lecturer on social entrepreneurship with a Master's of Law from Harvard. She helps female social entrepreneurs create sustainable businesses to lift them and their families out of poverty. Now, if I asked you to think of an image of poverty, I wonder what will come to your mind. More likely than not, you probably would have imaged something like this. A woman sitting by the side of the streets with her child and begging out of desperation. But why is this the case? Because often these women are rural women and they live in areas where there's no roads, no electricity, no sanitation, no water. And they are the bottom pyramid of the society. And they are the ones that are made to go walk, collect water, bring it back, cook and clean for the kids. And many of them even have to farm to bring subsistence living. So when opportunities do come to the village, like education, these women are forgotten. They are invisible and they get left behind. And this phenomenon is called the feminization of poverty. And when I first heard about it, I was shocked to the core of my being. And I wanted to learn how I can do something about it. The second question I'm going to ask you to imagine is, do you think you are contributing in any way to perpetuate poverty? Well, when you walk into a store and you see something on sale, do you ask yourself, I wonder who made this or how was I able to get it on a deal? Well, think about it. Most often than not, it's done in a factory. Often it's in a very dingy place. And the women don't get paid enough to even buy the clothes that they sew. The fast food industry and the fast fashion industry exploits the poor and brings things to you. So when you are not a conscious consumer, you are actually perpetuating poverty. In 2008, I ran across a book by Professor Muhammad Yunus called Creating a World Without Poverty. And that book changed my mind about how I saw poverty. Because like most of you, I'm sure most of you think that poverty is just a way of life. It is there, there's nothing we can do about it. And I used to think the same too. But when I read the book, he said, poverty is man-made. And if we did something about it, we can, in fact, end poverty. He says, someday, poverty will be in the museums. Professor Yunus is very well known for microcredit. And he is the father of microcredit, for which he got the Nobel Peace Prize. And that idea has spread all over the world. You can give money to the woman to have a sewing machine, and she can sew. But she needs to be able to sell. She needs access to markets. She needs to know that the quality is good enough. So he also went on to write another book. It's a model that he came up with, where you can have an umbrella organization that helps the training and influences the quality of the education and the work for the women to be able to do something meaningfully. For example, Gramin Shakti is an organization where women get trained to be solar technicians and solar engineers, and they go out there and they actually put solar on the roof. And you should see the look on their faces with pride. Now, if you donated the solar panel to them, they may not be able to do anything if something went wrong. But if they were trained to maintain it, then it's a successful model. So that gave me hope that, wow, there are models out there that are beginning to end hunger and poverty in this world. But this other phenomena that I saw, which was really fascinating, uh, is the movement of social enterprises as well. And what was fascinating was that many of these social enterprises were actually run by women. There were women helping women, women helping the micro-enterprise women access markets, get the training, know what the market needed. And that was really, really fascinating. And I was very fortunate to know many of them, and I wanted to tell you the story of one of them. Her name is Ibudini Yusof, and she started a social enterprise called Toraja Melo, which is based in Indonesia, and she works with the weavers up in the ruralest mountains in Sulawesi called Toraja, a beautiful place, but it's very difficult to access anything up there. And she works with them to bring them to global markets, to get them trained on the quality and also what the market needs. She goes up to this beautiful mountain, Toraja, which is her husband's village, And she sits there and she begins to see all the things happening around her. She was shocked that families were forced to send their young girls 
overseas to work as migrant workers, and believe it or not, some worked as sex workers because they needed the income to be able to survive. This was a community that used to make their money from weaving, but weaving was no longer respected. So even in the community, they never wore weaving anymore. So Dini would see these young girls come back with unwanted pregnancies, many abused, many sexually molested, and she wanted so much to save those girls from having to go overseas. But she knew to do that, she needed to try to make weaving a way for them to make the income again. But to do that, she had to restore pride in weaving. So what she did was she began to take part in fashion shows, bringing their things in very contemporary clothing. She worked with the urban poor women to make head-to-toe very innovative products that she brought to market. She would find out what kind of threads and colors people like, bring it back to the weavers, and then bring the goods to the market. So President Obama's sister, who is Indonesian, actually ordered clothing from her. So before you know it, they began to wear their weaving again. And when they wore the weaving, the women could weave and they could make an income. So Dini has actually gone on to save the lives of these girls. Many more young girls today are staying and learning how to weave because it's actually now prestigious. So I'm just going to end with giving you a thought. It is time to see women as the solution. And it's also time to see that we can, in fact, end hunger. It's very important to have some data in your mind. Stop seeing women as invisible. Stop seeing women as the one who only carries the water. See women as key to poverty reduction. The World Bank has shown that as statistics. The UNDP has shown that money in the hands of the women can do a lot more good for nutrition, health and education of the child and the family than the same amount in the hands of a man. So when you take a woman out of poverty, you take the family and the community out of poverty. So that's very inspiring. Do not accept the fact that poverty is a way of life. Become a conscious consumer. Just don't walk in there and buy anything. Ask yourself who made it, how was it made, what was the supply chain like. When you do that, you impact lives. Try and support these amazing women entrepreneurs. Buy from them, invest in them, and together we can actually make a difference. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Singapore. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Singapore Women. Want to listen to the full talk? Find Lena's talk and more at TED.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you next time.